I'm a skeptic. I don't like those terms because I think everyone should be skeptical. We need skeptics. We need intelligent people with a skeptical attitude about this because this is a strange field. But a debunker is someone who is out there to tear people's stories down, to ridicule people uh, so that the people will either just go away and take their stories with them or will, will be forced into a situation where they'll, they'll, they'll admit that they made it all up even though they didn't. Four basic rules for UFO debunkers. And Travis has run into all of these. Don't bother me with the facts. My mind's made up. What the public doesn't know, I'm not going to tell them. If you can't attack the data, this is particularly true in Travis's case, attack the people. And do your research by proclamation. Investigation is too much trouble. You know, it's so funny because I, I've, I've gone on a lot of times with some debates with some of these debunkers. And you're extraterrestrial, you say. I said, I didn't say it was extraterrestrial. I said, maybe it is. I don't know. How am I supposed to know? All I'm saying is that this is what people saw. This is what was reported. This is what the photographic evidence backs up, the radar evidence, whatever it is, whatever particular case it is. You can speculate all you want is to figure out what it was. We know what it wasn't. They begin with the idea that if it's unproven, that's the absolute equivalent of disproven. And, you know, if you think about it, that's pretty absurd. They know that UFOs aren't real. They absolutely know it is empirical fact. You know, how cool is that? They will reach and they will stretch and they will find anything that they think will make some kind of sense to somebody as a way of explaining. Their whole job is, we must explain this away. Certainly one of the most successful propagandists of the second half of the 20th century was Philip Glass. Uh, and his area of propagandizing was almost anything strange, but especially UFOs. He, uh, through the 50s and early 60s, had never read anything on the topic of UFOs. But he had already predetermined that anyone who believed that this had happened was a crank or a kook. Those were two of his favorite words. He sat in a very privileged position. He was senior avionics editor for Aviation Week and Space Technology based in Washington, D.C. So the go-to guy for any media people who needed anything. Class was a man who was extremely well connected. You know, years before the Travis Walton case, Class worked very hard to, to destroy the reputation of one of America's leading atmospheric uh, physicists, a man named James McDonald, who was a fearless, brilliant, tireless UFO investigator researcher. To kill the character of people if you couldn't attack their findings was something that Philip became very good at. I think Philip contributed directly to the suicide of Dr. James McDonald, one of the finest and most courageous scientists in the history of trying to get UFOs into the public mindset. Class also did the same thing with Stanton Friedman. I uh, discovered a letter in the archives, in the Canadian National Archives. When Friedman moved to Canada back in 1979, Class wrote a, a scandalously scathing, uh, libelous letter to the Canadian National Research Council trying to destroy Friedman's reputation there. He carried on what I would call a personal vendetta against Travis. Uh, he hadn't talked to any of the witnesses during that, or naturally not, that wasn't his style. There were some rather underhanded uh, tactics being employed, altering quotations to, make, to reverse the meaning of things that people said, and even misquote to make it seem that they were saying something they didn't. Philip Class did contact me and I took him out to the scene. We spent a day out there. He brought a Geiger counter out with him and we went to the scene and he checked it out. I received a f phone call from uh, Philip Glass and he told me who he was and what he was looking for and information and he started asking me questions. I had some input with regard to Mr. Glass beforehand so I asked him if he would just put all the questions and stuff in writing and send it to me. I would be happy to answer his questions, but I never did receive any letters from him. 
Philip Klass was extremely thorough in digging. I mean, he called uh, former employers, he had everything, uh, uh, but he connected with anything. And here, I am the main person involved, never attempted to even phone me, never attempted to write a letter or anything. So there is no concern with truth or with people's reputations or anything like that. That's the way he was, and I say that, I met with him, we've even had some meals together, where we agreed not to talk about UFOs, frankly, but uh, most of the time. What the uh, crew did was get together and uh, sign a joint letter challenging Philip Class to a new polygraph test that the crew would take. And it would have to be an examiner that was mutually agreed upon so that, uh, that, the, that in the aftermath, when we passed, which we would, 